It's post-Memorial Day weekend, which can only mean one thing. Social media right now is being flooded with photos, statuses, and metal news outlets all talking about the chaos that happened with the yearly Extreme Music Fest, that being the Maryland Death Fest. For those who aren't aware, the Maryland Death Fest is an annual extreme music festival that happens on Memorial Day weekend that takes place in, you guessed it, Baltimore, Maryland. The first Maryland Death Fest happened in the year 2003, and ever since then it's been consistent on a yearly basis again within the Memorial Day weekend, other than the years 2020 and 2021 where obviously COVID restrictions basically canceled out the festival from happening on those two particular years. The two founders for MDF are Ryan Taylor and Evan Harding. Now interestingly enough, both of these individuals have been in extreme metal bands. Ryan Taylor is in a death metal band called Saborium, while Evan Harding has been in a handful of other extreme metal bands, but the most noticeable one to me that I really enjoy is that he's the vocalist for the gore grind band Miasmatic Necrosis. Personally, I would say that is one of the many reasons that has led to the success of the Maryland Death Fest, is that the two founders have a good grasp on the overall extreme metal scene, and they know what they're looking for when starting up a lineup for the festival. As they've stated, the concept of the event is to bring to the world the best and most extreme bands the underground has to offer, never conforming to trends or being limited by genre restrictions. We want to showcase what extreme music, both new and old, is capable of. As someone who's been to this festival four times now, I would say for the most part, they've succeeded on that stance. For a lot of people, it's considered to be the biggest extreme metal festival in North America as it attracts attendees from all over the world and has had over 700 different bands playing within the lineup, all spanning from over 30 countries. Going off personal experiences, I've attended this festival from the years 2015, 2016, 2017, and most recently, 2022. So I can't say much about the years 2003 into the years of 2013. However, in the year 2014, this would be the first year that they would have the setup for all the lineup of multiple stages, that being the Edison lot, the sound stage, and Ram's Head. The Edison lot, which is a rented out parking lot for the weekend for the Maryland Death Fest, along with the Ram's Head and sound stage venues, are all within walking distance of each other. And what I really enjoy about this setup is that it allows the lineup to be more aired out and not so condensed for the most part. What I mean by that is that each of these three areas contain specific kinds of bands that you're looking for. The Edison lot, which would house more of the wider audience as it's a rented out parking lot, typically has like the bigger names with an extreme metal playing there from around, you know, the afternoon to 10 at night where Ram's Head caters to more of like black metal and death metal, and Soundstage has more bands within the realms of like hardcore punk, grindcore, and power violence. It's just overall really nice and convenient because whatever style you're really in the mood for, the particular genre that you want to seek out within this festival, you can find it particularly within one specific venue if that's to your taste. And what's really convenient about the area between Soundstage, Edison Law, and Ram's Head is right smack dab in the middle of it is this street called Gay Street and it has a restaurant where you can get chicken and pizza and it's right between two strip clubs. Plus I really enjoy the Edison Law as a whole. It's very wide and spacious and you can just hang out with people if you want to just kill time if you're waiting for a particular band to come up within the set list. Plus, there's all the merchandise and vendors right outside of it that you could get all your, you know, merchandise needs that you would want. Plus, every so often, they'll have, like, just some kind of, like, special oddities within the vendors. Because I remember back in 2016, they had some of the people from Adult Swim appear where you could, like, take pictures and talk to them all about uh, that show, I think, around that time, that being Mr. Pickles. And as I stated a second ago, some of the vendors that sell merchandise there have some like oddities and rarities that are really cool. For example, I got this portal poster from the Season of Mist uh, merch stand, and it's like limited to, I believe, 30 prints. Another example being where I got a ram skull. Just some dude was just selling skulls I thought they were for display, and I asked him, and he was like, no, they're, they're for sale, and I capitalized on that immediately. <laughs> 
and most recently that I got from this year's festival that I thought was just so unnecessarily extra, but just so cool, is this massive exhumed gore metal blanket that it's like, come on, when the fuck do you see merchandise like this in person? As for the music that I've seen from the Maryland Death Fest, I know I'm going to sound like an overdramatic teenager that just got done watching the Vans Warp Tour, but some of the best concert experiences I've had have came from the Maryland Death Fest. I've seen Anoma Throck, Dragged Into Sunlight, Portal, Gnaw Their Tongues, Knelt Row, and a plethora of other bands that I was just so certain I thought I'd never see that have all came from the experiences of attending the Maryland Death Fest. Hell, even this year had some heavy hitters, but for me personally, the standout for this year's lineup was seeing Tom G. Warrior, one of the very few OGs left of first wave black metal, performing songs off of Triumph of Death from Hellhammer, his first band that he was a part of. Like, I was so certain I would never see anything like that, but leave it to the Maryland Death Fest to make it happen. Even though for the most part the lineups are really consistent if you're looking for a particular genre within the stages, however I do like the fact that the Maryland Death Fest isn't afraid to shy away from just adding in a few oddballs every so often to really spice up the lineup, because I believe it was either 2015 or 16, they got mob deep to close out the first day of the event. Or the time that they got Ghost, a synthwave project to play between the sets of Sargeist and a few other black metal bands. Or back in 2011, they got Ghost to play their first ever American show at the Maryland Death Fest. Just when it comes to the lineup of the Maryland Death Fest, I'm always so interested to know who they're going to announce. Even the years that I didn't attend, I still am really invested to know what they get because it's always just something interesting or special that they do, whether it be for your taste or not. As for all the crazy stories and drama that has surfaced throughout the years at the Maryland Death Fest that people have been criticizing about it, saying that it seems so trashy, it's a hot dumpster fire of an event, it just seems so, you know, gross and they're so happy that they didn't go to it. like. Here's my stance on it, and I'm not like defending some of the things that have happened because you can see some of them that people are talking about right now online, and it's really, um, eesh, to say the very least. However, you gotta think of it like this. This is an extreme metal festival in Baltimore, Maryland. Do you really expect all the attendees to act civilized in an environment like that? Like, give me a fucking break that out of nowhere people are becoming Mr. Highbrow Fancy Pants on how to be civil at an extreme metal fest. As much of a success that the Maryland Death Fest is that's given me such wonderful memories that I still cherish to this day, you know, it's really quite heartbreaking to a certain extent that this might be the last Maryland Death Fest, as they announced that 2023 there will not be a Maryland Death Fest, and they're not really sure if they will continue on from 2024 onwards as COVID's really done quite the damage to them financially. Which, if that's the case, I'm really glad that I ended up going this year. It was last minute and I figured why the fuck not. You know, experience this festival one more time. And while I'm really happy that I saw, you know, Trypticon and Tom G. Warrior playing Hellhammer songs, Pro Fanatica, Necrophobic, and a few other uh, extreme metal bands, Really what stood out this year for me was just meeting all, all of you guys. It was really mind-blowing to me just seeing all the people that were coming up to me talking to me. You know, I couldn't even go to my car and just charge my phone for 20 minutes unless someone came up to me and talked to me. I couldn't even go to the bathroom without someone pointing me out that I'm Wyatt X him and they, you know, you guys watch me. And it really means a lot to me guys, alright, because I still to this day feel like a nobody. Alright, I've never taken this channel too, too seriously. I try to be grounded in the sense that I'm not this special enigma on YouTube. I'm just a guy with a camera that likes talking about this stuff, and that's really it. And I really thank you guys a lot. Plus, I really want to thank, again, all the people that I've met there, that I've become now friends with, to just seeing old faces that I haven't seen in years. Like, fuck, this festival 
musically was great, but socially was spectacular for me. And I thank each and every one of you guys, you know who you are, that made this event all the better for me. If this truly is the last Maryland Death Fest, then they ended it on a high note, which I wouldn't expect anything less from them. You know, to all the crew, staff, organizers, and founders of the Maryland Death Fest, thank you for giving me all of these priceless memories that I'll always cherish for the rest of my life. And that'll do it for this video. So like always guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated, and have a great day.